Hello, here we go. We're doing this again. It's time for what I guess is the third installment of my Far From the Matting Crowd review miniseries. This time I'm talking about the 1998 Masterpiece Theater version, which stars Paloma Baeza, I hope I'm saying that right, as Bathsheba Everdeen, Nathaniel Parker as Gabriel Oak, Nigel Terry as Farmer Boldwood, and Jonathan Firth as Sergeant Troy. I admit going into this that I was a little wary, given my lukewarm reaction to the 1967 version, but I'd heard about this one and been interested in this one before I even read the book, so I was determined not to be put off. So how did it compare? Well, I think the DVD cover is a pretty good indication. Bathsheba standing in the middle, the three guys standing around looking at her, nice rural background. I feel this accurately reflects the story, and I approve. I certainly approve more than I approved of the 1967 DVD case. This one is also long, nearly four hours, but while it takes time to flesh out the story and characters, it doesn't feel slow and drawn out and ugh, when's this gonna end already? Given that it was so long and not a theater release, I had a pretty good feeling that it was going to be pleasantly faithful to the book, and I'd say I got pretty much what I was hoping for. Paloma Baez's Bathsheba strikes just the right blend of independence and innocence. She's vain, she's naive, she's got a temper. Her behavior and attitude is most affected by her interactions with those around her, and those different facets of her character really came through in this performance. Likewise, I was happy with Nathaniel Parker as Gabriel Oak. He was very close to what I'd imagined in the book. This version gives him more screen time, both on his own and with Bathsheba, so that their relationship has greater emphasis throughout the movie, not just at the beginning and the end and a couple times in the middle. The result is that you feel you know him better, and it's that much more painfully obvious how superior he is to all the other guys. Nigel Terry's Boldwood has an older, slightly more severe look than I'd envisioned, which I admit did make it a little difficult for me to believe he was still a hot commodity for the ladies in the area, but on the flip side, I think that made his clumsiness as a lover even more convincing, while his intensity as the over-persistent, intimidating, won't-take-no-for-an-answer Boldwood was spot on. And Jonathan Firth as Sergeant Troy was... well... Totally unlikable, as required. The more I see of Troy, in any form, written or on screen, the less I can stand him. That's the character, of course, not the actor. It's not the actor's fault that the character is a jerk and I want to punch him in the face. Actually, I wanted to punch Troy in the face most of the time when I was reading the book, too, so I'd say Firth was right on target. Like the 67 version, this one spends a good amount of time on the Fanny Robin storyline. It was developed even more in this one, so that Fanny felt more like a real character instead of someone who just popped up a couple times in order to set a series of events in motion. So the main characters were good, the minor characters were well played, the story was well done. I am starting to realize that I don't enjoy watching the story as much as I enjoyed reading it. There's just so much of the plot that drives me crazy, and I miss Thomas Hardy's writing and his descriptions. There are a couple things that, uh, how do I put this, sexify the adaptation? I guess in the 90s, period dramas wanted to break away from the stagier, line-by-line -line adaptations of the past, and maybe to some viewers, it gives the story an extra touch of realism. But I personally find that if you add things like that, you're going to alter something. A character, a mood, a situation. For example, Troy kissing Bathsheba in the field is one thing. That's canon. It happened in the book. Having him start feeling her up, that's another thing. I felt like that took things to a little bit of a different level, and uh, I just... You know, I was also surprised that this version, sort of like the 1967 one, seemed to end on kind of a not negative, not melancholy, but a less than happy note, just at the very last second. Which, again, makes me question the story's final resolution, which was not something that happened when I read the book. Am I missing something? But I did like this, and was generally satisfied with it as an adaptation, so if you're looking for a film version of Far From the Madding Crowd, especially one that's very close to the book and has spot-on performances, 
I'd say go for this one. I can't say yet how it compares with the 2015 version, but when I review that, I'll let you know. Thanks for watching! Bye!